Hello to all of your friends. A very happy new year. I'm your host Piyali and uh, I welcome you all to the first webinar of year 2018. Today I have uh, Maciek Sowinski with me who is an agile coach from Poland. Maciek has been working with agile since uh, 2010 and in all these years he have worked with uh, multiple companies startups to big corporations and uh, large scale agile transformation even and uh, Masik have already worked in Poland, Denmark, Germany and uh, England and yeah I hope uh, we can have him in India soon. Today Masik will tell us uh, about how to deliver a great agile training. You know something uh, where the training room is buzzing from energy and engagement. So let's see what Masik has all to share with us. Masik, over to you. Okay, so hello everyone. In 2018, I hope, uh, well, I hope that this year will be good to you. Um, so today I would like to talk to you about how to deliver a great agile training. And I believe this is a very important topic. So I have been, um, I have been working with agile from 2010, so it's um, eight years right now. And I have seen a lot of, um, well, I would say bad Scrum or bad Agile, uh, Scrum in name only, and uh, Scrum that is, that is implemented, and uh, but there is like no benefit to it. Like there is no real change in how companies work, and I, be, I believe that this is um, due to also due to how we teach Scrum. So I would like to change this. I would like to I would like to you know encourage everyone to do a better, a great Agile training. Because of course, there's a lot of agile coaches there and they are doing a great job. But I believe we as, um, as an agile training community, we also can do a better job. So this is, I, this is, how, this is why I think that this is um, a really important topic, how to do a great agile training. Okay, so um, a bit about me. Uh, Piali said some stuff. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I have been working with agile since 2010 and I have been a coach and trainer since 2014. So it's already four years. Um, so um, I'm an aspiring certified Scrum trainer, which means that I work with my mentors and my clients across Europe, pretty much, uh, and deliver training, delivering trainings and workshops and, uh, you know, working with coaching clients. Uh, you can contact me here. There's my email, uh, matthew.savinski at gmail. Uh, there's also my LinkedIn and my Facebook. Well, I prefer to have all my work related stuff on my LinkedIn. So if you have uh, well something to say to me or maybe ask some questions or maybe suggest some stuff, please, please use the LinkedIn. Um, so I would like to start with, a, I would say, a powerful question, a big question. Um, and the question is, so do you want your participants to hear it from you, what you are saying, or do you want them to learn it? And uh, this was an important and powerful question to me because um, for years I have been doing trainings and I was thinking that, um, you know, just, you know, just lecturing is a good way of training, just telling the important stuff, just sharing the important knowledge. This is, this is the way to go. But I believe that there is a lot of misunderstandings on how we understand learning. Um, so a lot of us, a lot of my friends and me also, a few years ago, I have been thinking that how we how we learn on universities. This is the way to proceed. This is the way to learn. So there's you know there's one guy talking to about, about a bunch of people, and um, this is the way to learn. And I think this is uh, well well I figure out that this is not very effective, and I think that this is also very important in agile setup because agile is uh, for someone new to agile agile is hard to grasp. Agile is a lot of things. Agile has a lot of layers. Um, as well as a mindset, but also a culture and the way to do engineering practices. So there's a lot of stuff to it. Um, yeah. So uh, so do you want do you want your participants to hear your saying, or do you want them to learn it? So is it more about you and your ego and you know just saying and being on the stage, or do you want to encourage your participants to learn stuff? And if so, I believe that there is way better way of doing this than you know just just uh, lecturing them. So then I would like to give you two quotes from Jay Cross. Jay Cross is, um, people, is a guy who really influenced e-learning 
and he's also a father of, I would say, this new way of thinking about learning and teaching in general. It's called informal learning. And um, it's really important when you think about learning new skills and uh, not just not just learning knowledge, but learning new skills and transforming one behavior. So the first quote, uh, knowledge depends on engagement. Engagement is inseparable from empowerment. Empowerment means the opportunity to contribute. Learning is an act of participation and uh, we are all lifelong learners. And uh, this means to me that if you would like someone to really learn, to transform how they behave, if you want your training uh, to have an impact on someone's life, uh, you need to create some space for them to co-create uh, your learning in a way or your, your class how they teach stuff. So first of all, it have to be, of course, a structure, because as a trainer, we are, we are responsible for structuring and the, the, that we are in control all the, all the time. But at the same time, we have to give some space to participants to co-create how they learn, what they learn. So you know, there is, there is um, some fine balance here. And the second quote, we learn in context with others as it would even work. Recognizing this fact is the first step to crafting effective learning experience. From this quote, what I, what I take for myself is that learning in context is crucial. And I think um, it's really important with learning about Scrum and Agile because sometimes it's so weird or sometimes it's so subtle, the, the differences are so subtle. So um, when we learn about stuff, let's say a Scrum Master or Product Owner or Product Backlog. We really have to, during the moment of learning this, describe, discuss what this means, what this means, how to implement it, what we'll do with this knowledge the next day or the next week. So it's really important to, you know, to have this all big pile of Agile, chop to smaller pieces and discuss with every one of it what this means and how to implement it or maybe you know how to just proceed towards this goal. So um, yeah, so let's go from this. Let's go from this very, I would say, philosophical level to more practical one. Um, so I want you to have uh, some concrete session outcomes from what we are talking about today. Um, so uh, I would you, I would you to be able to list six learning principles that trump traditional learning plus one additional one. So it's seven in total, but. Um, it's six plus one because um, they're from different sources, I would say, and I will explain this later. So list the six learning principles, the Trump's traditional learning, learning, and one additional one, one additional principle. Um, then be able to explain what 4C method is. And this is, I would say, really crucial. And uh, if you take just one thing from this, from this hour, please, please take the 4C because this is something that transformed the way that I do my trainings. This is great. Uh, you will be able to list training activities that you can use with, with 4C method. And, uh, well, you will see real life training modules, you know, part of training that I use. So some of them, um, some of the training modules that you will see, I currently use. And some of the training modules that you will see, I used to use. And, you know, I change it a bit. So this is the concrete session outcome that hopefully you will have. And I will try, you know, to, to make it easy for you to have. Okay, so let's talk about these six learning principles. So the picture that you see right now, this is from a book called Training from the Back of the Room. So there is a book and there is a website. And uh, they are both great. Uh, the website is like content rich. You, you sh for sure should Google Training from the Back of the Room. So Training from the Back of the Room is all about brain-friendly learning. So what is, what is the current brain science, what we know about how brain works, that we can incorporate in how we teach. So the six learning principles are images trump words, talking trump listening, movement trumps sitting, writing trumps reading, shorter trumps longer, and different trumps same. So let's go, let's go and deep dive into every one of these. So the first principle, Images trumps words. I believe everyone has, uh, I don't know if you have the same saying, but here in Poland we have the saying that um, one image trumps thousand words. And this is true. 
it's way easier to remember something when it's visual or graphical. It's way easy, way easier to recall something, and that's really important for trainers. Um, it's way easier to recall something when you have seen it, not just heard it, but seen it. Um, it's way easier to remember something when you draw it. So pretty much this is it, right? You know, graphical stuff, it's easier to remember, easier to recall. You can engage with it more than it's just words. Oh, and one thing um, that I didn't tell you. The, the six learning principles, they are from the perspective of a, a participant of a training. So not a trainer, but a participant of a training. So the first principle, images trumps words, meaning that if I as a participant have a lot of images um, around me, it's better than having just words around me, right? So the second principle is talking trumps listening. Um, and this one, <laughs> with this one, it means that one of the best ways of um, remem remembering something is teaching it back to someone else, or you're just teaching it back, talking about it. So what we should encourage in our trainings and our agile trainings is our participants to talk to each other, to maybe share what they understand of, from what is happening to each other. Maybe one group will explain something to the other group, or maybe uh, the participants can work in pairs, which is even better. So encouraging, you know, just talking through and sharing what everyone has learned, not just, so not just the trainer is talking, but everyone is talking, of course, not in, not, not in the same time. There has to be some structure to it, but when participants talk, talk to each other about the topic of the training, that's great because they learn. Movement trumps sitting. So uh, this is pretty, usually pretty simple, but this is very important. So when we move, of course, our we have a better blood circulation. When we have a better blood circulation, there's more oxygen in our brain. And uh, if you would like to, uh, when we are engaged in learning, we, have, um, we need to have a lot of power in our brain. So we, we need to have a lot of oxygen there. Um, so it's, it's really good to engage your, par um, to encourage your participants to move around. Um, if you have a table groups, just you know, just rotating it, or maybe using some exercises that require some movement, or maybe just you know, allowing your participants of your train to stand, um, it's really really good. Well, there is, um, of course, in Scrum there is a daily stand up, and when usually it participate, you know, just standing up, right? Everyone is standing on daily stand up, and this is because it's way easier to stay focused on the daily stand up when you stand up. It's the same here. So just allow your participants to stand, or maybe even, um, well, what I tried sometimes is, you know, just performing some modules and everyone is standing. And uh, this, is really, this is really good, it's really working. Another principle is writing trumps reading. What this means is, is that um, it's easier to remember something when you write it down. Um, then when you just, you know, have, have a wall of text, uh, in front of you, and uh, maybe it's not really easy to understand everything. So, um, allowing your participants or encouraging them of using post-its, of drawing some posters, of filling some blanks, blanks, a blank space within the text, this is um, very helping in learning. So, encouraging your participants to learn, maybe having um, a learning log or you know a page when. Then when they write what they will do the next week after a training or a workshop, it's really helpful. So another one, shorter, shorter trumps longer. And this is um, this is really cool because it really ties up to the how we how we lecture in universities and how we shouldn't really um, teach agile and Scrum and uh, and skills really. So uh, there's uh, there's a research saying that. When you talk for more than, I believe, 20 minutes, um, people that listen to you, their brain starts to shut down. They start to, start to fade away. They start to thinking about something else. Um, even if, if, if they are quite engaged in what you are saying, they will start you know, losing some words or some sentence or some meaning. So what we should do, we should have a shorter, you know, shorter training modules. Uh, saying in the language of, of trainers, 
we should have a um, shorter burst of knowledge. Make it really short and you know just contextual and what does this mean and what I will do. And then go to another topic and make it short. And what does this mean to every one of us? What we understand from everyone, you know, from this and what we should do with this step. So just make everyone shorter. Um, as you can see, because I will show you some uh, modules, some train modules. Um, a lot of the modules I will show you, yeah, like half an hour, 20 minutes. So very, very short and very focused on a simple topic. And uh, different, different, another top, another learning example, learn, sorry, learning principle, different Trump's saying. So um, also regarding the brain knowledge, uh, the brain science, so people are very good in spotting patterns, really good in spotting patterns. And we need to spot patterns to, in a way, not think about the patterns, right? Just be on the auto drive. And it's really useful in everyday life, and it's really not useful in learning because in learning we have to be aware and awake all the time. So let's say that you have 10 training modules or 10, 10 items that you would like your participants to learn. And if you talk about every one of them in the same way, um, their brain will just you know, shut down, right? So this learning principle means that we have to mix it up up a bit. We have to make our modules, our trainings, you know, to be more, more varied, um, more creative, different from one another. So this is six principles that they come from the training from the back of the room. It's a great book. I really encourage them, encourage you to, to read it. And they are based on brain science. And right now I will give you the seventh learning principle and I will tell you why it's uh, not here pretty much. So. The one additional principle is not really based on, as I'm aware, on brain science, but it is aware of uh, what I have noticed a lot of really, really, really good trainers do. And pretty, pretty much every uh, CST, every certified Scrum trainer that I know use this principle, and it's called diverge and converge. So what does this mean? This means, you know, also using, uh, is an example of uh, university lecturing, which is not a good example here, but like a counter example. Um, so when we generate knowledge in a, uni in a university setting, there is one lecturer and there's a lot of learners. And the amount of knowledge generated or passed upon is um, really tied down to how fast the, the new university lecturer is, is talking. Because just one person is talking and everyone's listening, and uh, well, we can optimize this, but we don't really we don't really want our lecturer to talk very very fast. So what to do with this? How to like make make this knowledge um, sharing more denser? How to make it uh, you know more of it, more of the knowledge, more of learning uh, in in a unit of time? Um, we have to break the group in smaller groups or break our our learning group to the pairs and let the pairs learn from each other and explain stuff from each other or to each other and from each other. So this is the diverse phase. So you give a question or you give um, a problem to the group and you encourage them to work in pairs. You know, and every pair will generate some answers. So this is the diverge part. And the next phase is a converge. So converge means pretty much we get up all the answers and we, um, you know, um, we we'll make sense of it. So what usually we can do, we can encourage our participants to use post-its, maybe to, if you have, if you have a lot of participants in our training, we can cluster it. So similar answers are in similar area of the whiteboard, let's say, and other answers are in, uh, well, other area of the, of the whiteboard. But there is, um, there's a catch here. So first of all, uh, I think this is a really good pattern and it really amplifies the learning and it really amplifies the energy in the room. And we need a lot of energy to learn. If we are low energy, it's really hard to learn and grasp everything and be you know, constantly on and engaged. Uh, so I really encourage you to use this pattern, high performance pattern we can, we can call it, but there is a catch. So on the converge phase, um, you have to remember as a trainer that well, we as a trainers, we need to be in control all the time. And we need to 
close a topic with clear message. So a good example here is a Scrum Master role in Scrum. Um, even within one company, if, if this, in, in this one company there's multiple of teams, in every team, Scrum Master can do a bit different tasks. Everyone knows Scrum, but the Scrum Master is doing a bit different tasks. And when we are you know, just talking about Scrum Master, um, maybe there's a lot of sometimes conflicting answers. So what you have to do, we have to be clear. So what is the answer? What does Scrum Master do? And what is the role about? Well, in this example. Um, so, you know, to sum it up, to sum it about, up, up very precisely and to not leave any questions about the topic. So this is the additional principle, I would say, extracted from reality or extracted from looking at really good trainers. Um, next thing that I would like to talk to you about, this, this is the 4C model. And this is a thing that um, enables us to design really good um, training modules. So first of all, uh, as you can see, there's four quadrants here. So there is uh, connections, the C1, there's concept C2, uh, concrete practice C3, and conclusions C4. And this is why this model is called 4C, because there's four, four C, C1, C2, C3, and C4. So we'll talk about uh, every of these quadrants, um, you know, in a bit, but I would like to talk to you about in the model itself. So as I told you in the start, uh, if you take anything, from this uh, from this webinar, please take this 4C because it's awesome. Uh, so about the model itself, the first big thing for me um, when I was introduced to this to this thing called 4C is that wow! So you can have you can have a training module. So, so it's not like you have uh, just one or two or three day training and it's a constant flow of thoughts. You have have can have let's say a bucket a bucket called Scrum Master, a bucket called Product Owner, a bucket called Daily Stand-Up, a bucket called Product Backlog. And within this bucket, there's everything connected to the topic. So in a way, it's separate. When you, uh, when you, when you are, let's say, saying about Product Backlog, you go from through connection, concept, concrete practice, and conclusion of the Product Backlog, and this is it. This is all the knowledge that you need, well, your participants to have. So it's, in a way, uh, we can say that this, this is um, an implementation of this good engineering practice called encapsulation. In a way, it's a bit of a stretch, but in a way we are using agile engineering practices um, to engineer our, our training. So this is cool. Um, another cool thing here is that, um, as you can see, there are like five uh, clock icons here. There's one of the top, and in the center there are four of four of the clocks. Four of the clocks. Um, I will show you some examples of these modules, so you will know what this means. But pretty much this means that every part of the module has its own time box. So for con there's a time box for connection, time box for concept, time box for concrete practice, and time box for conclusions. And this is really nice because um, you can really you can really be in control and feel in control of what is happening. If the connections, the C1, the connections, this is taking longer, you can you can react. Because usually time blocks are very, very short. So you can constantly see what is happening and react to it. And this is very similar to if you have a product backlog item, you just split it to smaller chunks to make it more visible of what's happening and being controlled. So it's also, in a way, we can say that using agile pr principles, agile product management principles, or product delivery more principles um, in our training, in designing our training. And the third thing itself, in the model itself, uh, if you can see, there are like this line of words, move, speak, draw, listen, write, with every of the quadrants. Uh, so what we do with this, with this thing? Well, we draw what kind of action the participants are taking. So if they're just listening, you just circle listening. If they're listening but also talking to each other, uh, you, you circle listen and speak. If they draw something, you also circle draw. And this is really nice because, as you remember, the, one of the principles, learning principles, is different trumps same. So we don't want every our quadrants to have our participants do the same stuff, right? 
um, we would like them to to different stuff to learn better. So it's it's really good um, it's a really good thing you know to be just aware of it. So let's say that we're talking about product owner and in in the connection phase we are listening in the concepts we are listening in concrete practice we are listening and in conclusions we are listening. So well, first of all, it means that this is just a lecture, and second of all, it means that like we're doing constantly the same stuff. So it's not really engaging. So the level of energy will go, will go lower and lower. Okay, so this is the model itself. Um, this concrete, because this is a template, um, this, this template is from this company called Growing Agile. They, are, they have really cool stuff on training from the back of the room and of doing trainings. They are from South Africa. Um, and I will show you, I, I think this template is from one of their books and some of the real examples are also from their books because I have been using them. This book is called Coach's Guide to Training Scrum, I believe. And I highly recommend the book and I highly recommend looking for Growing Agile. They have cool stuff. So let's go through each piece of the 4C template. So first, maybe just we we'll just go back for a second. Back. So for every training module, we have this template. So let's say that you have three topics that you would like to cover. For every topic, you have one of these. So let's go. Let's go further. The first, the first um, step building block is connection. Connection is. You know, just asking participants to connect with what they already know about the topic, or maybe they think they know about the topic, or to themselves. A good example would be if we are talking about, let's say, product backlog. We can ask participants, okay, so how in your team, how in your company, you deal with requirements? And probably there will be some different answers, and these different answers may, may lead us somewhere. It also enables our learners to connect to each other and you know m more a bit more about themselves and uh, in essence you know just grow trust within the group so this is good this is this is cool so this is about you know um, asking what they already know because when we talk to adults usually they know some stuff about the topic that we are learning that we are teaching them they know some stuff so it's good to ask okay so what they already know the concept phase. Well, the concept phase is pretty much the phase when we share what we would like them to learn, um, you know, inject new information into their heads. Um, the big thing here is that ideally we would like to get this new information to them is in a multi-sensory way. So what does this mean? Um, listening is not good enough. Uh, sorry, <laughs> just, just saying, the saying um, and lecturing is not good enough. Um, drawing, maybe showing a video or two within your class this is a good example of multi-sensory, um, you know, showing, showing knowledge. Um, also, one of the really important things is that we should make the concept phase short. So 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, stuff like this, because after this time, as we know, the brain shuts down. So this is the, this is the pretty much the only phase when we give the new information to the learners. And this is really important because when you have when you don't have a lot of time, you need to be clear on what is the core message. And the rest of the time, pretty much we will spend on discussing what does this mean and how to use this new knowledge within the working life, within the working environment. What does this mean? We don't want just to increase the knowledge, but to increase the skill of our learners and uh, change how how they behave. So this is the only time the concept phase is the only time when we share some new information with them. Concrete practice. Concrete practice means that we ask in a multitude of ways. Uh, we'll talk about this later. Uh, we ask uh, participants of our training to try, try, um, and practice new skill. Not always this is really easy. Sometimes, let's say that it, uh, some, sometimes it's easier to say what this skill is not. So I can give you some example. A few years ago, I have been doing some training, agile training, and a, a part of this training was about coaching. 
what coaching is. And so if for someone who is new to the concept of coaching, it's really hard to say what coaching really is. But it's easier to say what it is not. So I think I can, with high degree of confidence, say that coaching is not telling people what to do. So sometimes this is, you know, just telling what the skill is not. This is about um, putting the new knowledge within the context, within the existing framework of what the participants already know. Also, a good way of thinking about this is, you know, we can encourage our participants to teach the new knowledge to each other, how they understand it, how it is different of what they what they are doing right now. So this is the phase called concrete practice C3. And very important, um, maybe not the most important, but really, really important part of this, this training module, it's called C4 conclusions. So in C4, in conclusions, we ask them to write, okay, so what would change in their behavior right now when they have new knowledge, naming the participants, uh, what they will do tomorrow, what they will do next week, what they will try, what they will maybe try not to do. So we, we are trying every topic to be very concrete and very to the ground and very influencing their behaviors. So we are not allowing, you no, know, just train just the flow. We're not allowing our participants to just to be on the train and be on the lecture and just, you know, just listening to us. Um, the purpose of uh, a train is to change behavior is to better someone's performance, is to, in a way, make their, their lives better, right? So right now our learners, our participants learned something more. So how will we ask them, how will this change what they do? And um, sometimes it's also hard if it's more abstract thing we are learning or we are teaching. Something, sometimes it's hard to say on the spot what we would uh, do, do with this. That's why really good, a really good practice is, um, you know, encouraging our, uh, um, encouraging our learners to keep a learning log. So, you know, just a, just a sheet of paper with what they learned and where, where, what are their thoughts and maybe, you know, some questions to just ponder about after they leave their, uh, the class. So this is, this is the four C's. Okay, so, um, yeah, just back to the ground. Uh, we have been doing, we have been talking about a bit about theoretical stuff, so right now what this means. So this is a real life um, training module that I have been using for my classes. This module also comes from uh, Growing Agile, this company from uh, Southern Africa. So this module is support product backlog. So there's a few things here um, to notice. First of all, if you can see there is a 35 on the top of the page, near to the clock, which means that the whole module uh, it's 35 minutes, so it's not very long. It's just 35 minutes. Um, the connection phase, um, people are talking to each other, people are listening, and uh, pretty much we just shout out just open questions. So uh, what are the things that you put into your backlogs? Stories, requests, maybe some spikes, whatever. So this is just three minutes, just three minutes. Then we are teaching about the, the backlog, we are teaching about the iceberg, about the product backlog item and the evolution of product backlog item from epic to story. Uh, we are saying that there is no tasks in product backlog item, there are in spring backlogs tasks, about the vertical, sli vertical slice versus horizontal slice and about the deep, uh, deep backlog from Micon, deep backlog. So this is the teaching part. Okay, so right now what does this mean for them? So we are going back to their reality. So we ask them to draw uh, if their backlog would be iceberg, how would, how would this iceberg look like? So maybe they have a lot of small tasks or maybe a lot of big tasks. Maybe the tasks are really interconnected or maybe they are just separate or maybe they have like few products they are working on. So how this looks like really for them in their reality? So this is concrete practice because it's, go, it's going back to the reality. And the um, C4 conclusion, so what does this mean? So how will they how they act differently when they have this knowledge? So there's, um, uh, there's a question, there's an uh, you know, inquiry to write down one thing 
that you would like to change about your backlog when you go back to your team, to your company, to your product, to your product. So this is how you can structure everything that they need to know, your participants about product backlog. It's short, it's high energetic, it's very practical, it's very in the context, and it's very, I would say this like has a really nice call to action. Write down one thing that you would like to change, or maybe you will change when you go back to your, to your company, to your team. Really nice example. Another example also from, um, from Growing Idol, and also a tree module that I have used myself. So it's about product planning. And this one uh, has this metaphor of highway or freeway. I think freeway is a southern African way of highway. <laughs> um, so the connections. So uh, what do you think about highway or freeway? What comes to mind, right? Just to, just to touch the ground, what they already know. Then we teach the analogy um, between delivering or planning a product and pretty much how the highway um, is operating, right? So we pretty much we need some slack. We need some slack to be agile with our delivery and be agile with our, well, product delivery, pretty much. Technical delivery and product delivery. Um, then we have concrete practice. Again, going back to the reality. So we ask them, the participants, to draw how it is right now for them, how the freeway looks like, um, how they feel. Is there is like a lot of a lot of stuff to do, or maybe there is some slack, or maybe they are constantly overwhelmed and working over hours. How it looks like. And then again, in C4 and conclusions. Okay, so write down one point that most concern you. And this is this is a really cool one because. We can also you know, ask them to talk about this point uh, with their superior or someone with, within their team. So it's, again, like a call to action. Not, not so straight as in the first example, but also call to action. And this one is just 20 minutes. So as you can see, it's like really short, really sweet, really focused piece of training. I really like this. But we can use um, this 4 method of design not just for trainings, but also for different type of stuff. So here, um, this is for C for um, a workshop. A workshop that I have given to one of my clients a few weeks ago. Uh, I hope that you can see this because it has been written um, just in um, just just by pen. So um, this is a bit longer one. It's just two hours, but it's the full the full workshop is here. What is happening after what? And you know what is the time boxes and what is happening, everything is here. So it has been a workshop on how to give feedback. It has been a workshop for Scrum Masters. Uh, it has been, well, the whole time box is 120 minutes, so two hours. I asked them, I started the workshop by asking questions, so what do you already know about feedback? And different people know different stuff. And I also encourage them to comment on one, one another answers. So it enables me and them to connect to the topic and connect to themselves better. So it's good. Then for 20 minutes, I, I show a very simple model of feedback and I give you a few examples on how to use it. So this is like the new knowledge for them. Then the concrete practice. Um, so in this, uh, in this example, we practice the skill because we, we were able to practice the skill. So there were, there were no game around it, just practicing the skill. So in pairs, I asked them to create three situations that um, they would like to give someone feedback, maybe from last week, maybe from last month. Then we role play the situations and then we discuss what happened. And it was 40 minutes just for training the skill, 40 minutes. And then um, the summing up part, 10 minutes. Okay, so what they will do next week, what they will try next week, in, in regards to how to give feedback. Maybe they will give feedback to someone. Maybe they will ask um, for a feedback from someone. So as you can see, it's very, very tight to, tight to daily practice, daily work. It's very tight to uh, gain skill and change the behavior. Um, OK, so when I first started um, working with this 4 C, um, the hardest part for me was, okay, so this is a cool idea, this is all nice. It's nice to have this energetic, short burst, burst of knowledge, but um, 
what kind of activity I can use because of course different strums the same so I cannot use really all the time the same activity so what I should use so I have uh, well here I listed a few of the a few of the activities I think is the is the easiest to use uh, the most easy to use for you um, in the connection phase uh, two activities that I think are quite nice are posted pretty much you just ask your learners to tell you what they think about the topic or maybe what is cool about the topic or maybe what are the questions they have about the topic and just you know, just post it into, into to the post-its using post-its uh, another good, good activity is share a story so you just ask the first part first first participants to is courageous enough to share a story related to the top to a topic um in the maybe I'll just go briefly through them, just very, very briefly. In the concept phase, so giving, um, giving the knowledge phase. So interactive lecture. So just giving a lecture plus drawing, or uh, maybe showing a video, or maybe a, sh a small role play. So this is an inter interactive lecture or graphical facilitation. So just be very precise on how you draw stuff. And let the drawing be you know everything that they need to know and just put it on the wall. So graphic facilitation, cool stuff. With the concrete practice, table demonstrations. So if you have, if you have, if you have table groups, you have tables and within well around the table you have groups. One table can show the skill to another one, or maybe they have uh, they, they can talk um, what the skill is not or what the skill is about. So pretty much you diverse and converge. You use this pattern. Um, also, a very cool thing for concrete practice is this is a, this is called it's called skill based activity. So there's a lot of um, agile games, and this is a spot for them. If you if you have you know an agile game, you can use it here. Or um, so there is there is this uh, agile game called ballpoint game, and it's really good for. Um, for introducing the pattern or introducing the thing called uh, self-organization. So this is an example of how you can use a game to introduce a skill or, or just show, show what the skill is about. And conclusions, uh, two activities, a ball toss, a ball toss, so a learner from a circle toss a ball to another learner and uh, pretty much everyone is just answering the question what they will do next week with the skill that they learned or the knowledge that they learned or um, action plans so you encourage everyone to make an action plan okay so what then we learn something new will something change or not um, I usually encourage you to go to the train from the back of the room um, so because there's a lot of actions a lot of activities there that you can check okay so um, I think it's pretty much 40 45 minutes from we start so let's go back to the summary well let's go to the summary um yeah if you will take anything please take 4 C from this webinar um, and use it as a guideline for your training module or for uh, your uh, workshop or for wh whatever really it's it's really good it really structures your thought and everyone you do is in a brain friendly manner so i really Highly encourage you to try this 4C stuff. Um, when you when you design a training or your workshop, you can check this seven learning or six plus one learning principles as a measure of how well your train how well your train is designed, how well your train is designed when it comes to brain science. And if it's all the same, just you know just change it up. Uh, keep keep diverse training exercises to keep everything fresh. This very important and always always ask yourself am I talking too much or is it okay is it 10 minutes or is it one hour if it's one hour probably it's too much so what I can do to, you know to make it more energetic and more concrete and more to the ground and just talk less pretty much talk less pretty much okay so cool so thank you uh, yeah for being here and for listening to me and that's all that I have prepared so Piali, can you take it from here? Yeah, sure, Masik. Uh, just let me check if you have any questions here. Okay, I can see a couple of questions. 
so uh, karthik is asking what is c1 uh, the connection means can you please elaborate right right so connection uh, means that we try to connect well we try to extract what the learners already know about the topic yeah okay so he has so much, again that that was uh, covered okay so uh, moving on to the next question i have another question here uh, we get to know through feedback how well uh, we do agile trainings but uh, without feedback how can we ourselves know if we are delivering a good agile training well i would say that there are maybe few markers there so because you can have like direct feedback you know just feedback from your uh, participants and in a way indirect feedback so of course direct feedback is this, direct feedback is the best so you can just ask them if you're not able to ask them you can look for other stuff so one of the good markers of you know saying if you is your training good one is you know you can look if the behavior of the participants of the training has changed in that okay they have learned something new but i they implemented it have they changed how they behave towards your their teammates um do they have the results they would like to have so this is an indirect stuff because uh, it's usually not just the team or the um, the guys that you are teaching um like just deciding about stuff also like um, with this indirect um, I would say metric for you it can be the seven learning principles so was there enough movement was, was there enough diversity within the training activities um, have you been talking too much or okay uh, is there a lot of um, drawing um, have your participants write something down so I would say that this is like um, not direct feedback Okay, so uh, moving on to the next question. Next, we have a question from uh, Satish who is asking, is all the 4C mandatory? Well, um, <laughs> so, so as, as with every new skill, I would say that uh, try your hardest to be. Meaning that um, if you're not very skilled with using 4Cs, please think that yes, it is mandatory. If you have been using it for you know several years, uh, maybe you can skip one or, you know one or two times. Um, but uh, you know, like try your hardest to fill every C C1, C2, C3, and C4. I know that sometimes it's not very easy, but you know just try it. Um, so I wouldn't recommend skipping them. Okay, should I move to the next question? Okay. Well, uh, if you are asking me, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, we have the next question. Can we interchangeably use the multi-sensory techniques for each quadrant? Or you mean to say concept should always be listened to? Well, yeah, this is, this is the hard part because usually what I do, um, I just, you know, I just um, say and draw in the concept part um, so if you have like if you have um, I would say some idea of making making the C2 the concept part you know more than the same and drawing this is great right so I would say everything should be well or also to be multi-sensory the more more multi-sensory the better um, pretty much um, so I think we can think about this in this way we can go we, we should go as far from the university lecture as possible right so what's university lecture it's just one guy talking all the time usually well with a small amount of drawing and maybe with some small amount of you know just taking notes and it's very very long and it's just just you know just one guy talking so if you can change it as much as possible it's good if you can change it even more that's even better okay so we have uh, yeah next question we have uh, do you think it is necessary rehearse the training 
Sorry, can you repeat the question? Uh, it's like, uh, do you think is it necessary to rehearse the training? Well, I think it's I think it's necessary to rehearse to rehearse the um, the concept part. It's really necessary because uh, now, like using this method of design the train using 4C, the concept part it is very short. It's 10 minutes. It's 20 minutes. It's a very short time. So I think we have to be very precise and very crisp with what kind of words are we using, what kind of metaphors are we using how we explain the concepts. So I think, yes, with uh, the C2, so concept, we should rehearse, um, you know, just once or twice, not, not, no, no more time, but I think, yes. I think this, this is very important using this method. Okay, moving on to the next question we have, uh, is there any real-time video which explains these concepts? or uh, any suggested videos showing best ways of coaching, etc. Right, right. So I'm sure there is. Uh, training from the back of the room this is pretty uh, popular concept. I think this is de facto standard when it comes to Scrum Alliance trainings. So I'm sure if you Google training from the back of the room, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, probably also there is a lot of stuff on YouTube, so you can, you can check it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, next uh, we have, does time permit to have 4C for all trainings? Uh, sorry, so is, is, should we have 4C for all trainings? So does the time permit the to question? have, does the time permit to have 4C for all trainings? So is, is there time to have 4C for all trainings? This is, yes. the, this is what you're asking? Yes, yes. Well, so, well, I teach Scrum and Agile and a lot of Agile related topics. And every one of those topics I use using 4C template. And I think uh, I have been also doing some, some workshops as you have been seen, as, as you can seen, as you have seen using this method. So um, maybe there are a lot of, well, I would say if you would like to just pass the knowledge. So, if you're not really interested in um, your participants gaining any skill, particular skill, or if you're not interested in, in, um, in changing the behavior of your participants, that maybe no, maybe this is not necessary, but a lot of time when it comes to agile stuff, so per programming or, you know, doing TDD or doing an analysis in a certain way or doing product delivery in a certain way of product management in a certain way, it's frequently about changing the behaviors and gain, getting the new skill. So in this area of trainings, I would say that 4 is really good. Okay, so now we have a very interesting question. So Vikram is asking, uh, Masik, did you go by 4 concept in this session? No, <laughs> sorry, I, I didn't go. I was trying to do, I was, I was thinking about this, but um, this, this is the first time I'm presenting on a webinar, so I wasn't I wasn't very confident. <laughs> so no, this webinar wasn't designed with uh, force in mind. Okay, so another question uh, we have. Could you please repeat the name of the book uh, you mentioned? Right. So um, the first book that I mentioned was Training from the Back of the Room. And the second book that I mentioned was a book from Growing Agile. And I think I mentioned this book. It's called uh, Coach's Guide to Training Scrum. Coach's Guide to Training Scrum. It's available on LeanPub. Lean and uh, if you're interested, I can you know just share some links with you. Okay, great. So uh, all these questions we had in the chat box, I think we have taken care of this uh, that question well. So that's all from the question side, Masik. And uh, if you have any further query or any question, please do come to the discussion forum of Discuss Agile Network. And there you can put all your questions. I would compile the questions and I would share those questions with you, Masik. So we can uh, go ahead with a post uh, written by you or uh, a blog, something like that. Okay. 
-hmm. Yeah, and we can share the link of that post with uh, all our attendees and on the social media as well. And uh, any further information about the question about SEUs, PDUs, all the informations uh, will be available on our discussion forum. For any information, please do visit the discussion forum of Discuss Agile Network. And uh, we will be coming back with another webinar on Jira the coming Thursday. That's uh, day after tomorrow only at the same time, 8 to 9 p.m. in the evening. So thank you all for uh, joining and uh, hope to see you again in our next webinars. Thanks again. And thank you so much, Masih, for the session. It was uh, quite a helpful session for many of us. Well, yeah. Thank you, everyone. See you. Okay. Okay. Bye.